All right, thanks for joining us today for this quick video. Today we are looking at ID cards. Uh, this video is going to cover the basics and provide a gameplay example at the end. Uh, more advanced use than strategy will be covered in future videos. Uh, subscribe to the channel for these for those videos and other great hero clicks content. All right, let's get right to it then. With Silver Age becoming the go-to format for our ROC events, uh, I think we're going to see lots of ID cards coming back into team builds. They're a great, great way to invest a small amount of points for what could be a big return. Uh, let me know in the comments if you already have a favorite ID card. I know they've been uh, used a ton in the past, uh, and then they took a little break here as they rotated out, but now we're going to see them again in Silver Age. Uh, which is going to be a lot of the bigger ROC events uh, for some of the exclusive prizes. And so we'll probably see a return to ID cards here in the very near future. From the comp comprehensive rule book, we have this section that deals with ID cards. I'm focusing on just one part of it, but you can look at the rule book under section 25 to get the other pieces here. <clears throat> but what it says is ID cards show that a character on your force has a special contact with a larger organization that may be able to temporarily help. Many, but not all ID cards say that they are unique and therefore only one ID card with that set symbol and collector number can be added to your force. ID characters, though not the ID cards themselves, use your sideline and follow all sideline rules, including the sideline limit. When adding an ID card to your starting force, you must also add an associated ID character to your sideline. Uh, we're gonna break that down over this video and uh, if it doesn't make sense now, it will all make sense hopefully by the time we get to the end. But uh, you do have to include the ID card points in your team build. You do not include the points of the designated sideline sideline figure. You want to remember that normal sideline limits are in effect, so no more than nine items can be on your sideline. ID cards have additional limitations that we're going to cover in a moment. In Silver Age, there's going to be uh, many options of what you might want to use on your sideline. Things like trouble alerts, uh, the scrawl spies are pretty recent allies that can boost up your captain and sidekicks. Uh, the destroyer prime is recent. He goes on your sideline. Uh, shift and focus, they occupy your sideline. So those nine slots, slots can get filled pretty quick. Uh, so even though we saw a ton of ID card use in the past, now with there being so many options of what you can put on your sideline, uh, you might wanna be, you might have to be more selective on how you use those sideline slots. Now, the, uh, the guidance on this, since it's just recently been put back in the Silver Age and making it be in a, a format, the go-to format for the big ROC events, there might be some additional clarification that comes out. So anything like that, I'm going to post in the comments below. Uh, but let's look at some of these ones just specifically before we start getting into all the little details. So WizKids issued this guidance in March of 2022. Uh, what they did was they made a clarification that all ID cards, even those that were released prior to Superior Foes of Spider-Man, which is when Silver Age starts, is Superior Foes Forward, but all ID cards are allowed in the Silver Age format. Uh, they are on the watch list. The new general rule is you can't have an ID card on your force if it shares a name with another ID card already on your force. So as we just said, ID cards themselves are unique by their collector number. But then there's this additional rule. The example they give is that there are two Wolverine ID cards out there with two different collector numbers, but we can't include both of those because they have the same name, Wolverine and Wolverine. So you would have to just play one or the other. Uh, they also banned two ID cards. So those ones they banned were uh, Captain America and US Agent. 
depending on when you're watching this video, there could be changes to the ban list. It's always good practice to, che to check the most current WizKids guidance as you prepare for events. Uh, you know, it, it would, it, uh, it's no good if you take all this time building up a team, you show up to an event and you forgot the, to check and the judge tells you, oh, this thing's been clarified or uh, there's an errata or uh, what you have on your team has recently been banned. So make sure you always check that stuff uh, so you don't waste your time on a big team build that then becomes uh, uh, something that you can't use. If there's any major updates, I'll post those to the comments of this video. Uh, as of March 22, the setup for all ID cards uh, is what we see here on the screen. Now I'll read this through so you want to be aware the setup written on your actual ID card uh, might be uh, this. So the errata would overwrite what you might have on some of the older ID cards. So the current setup is when you reveal forces, choose a character on your sideline whose name matches the name on this ID card and turn it to a start in line. That character is called an ID character. You can't have more ID characters on your sideline than characters on your start in force. Unique. Uh, note that the ID card is already on your team build. So then when you reveal forces is when you choose a sideline figure and a start in line. That figure is now designated as the ID character for that ID card. Uh, so those things match up. Also note the additional sideline limitation on the number of ID characters. So remember there's a sideline limitation in total, but then here's an additional limitation for your ID characters. Uh, as an example, if you have three figures on your starting force, you cannot have more than three ID characters. So even though you might have a total limit of nine sideline slots, if you have three figures on your starting force, you can't have nine ID characters on your sideline. You're limited to three ID characters. I also want to point out that uh, this Wiz Kids rule in, uh, since the question comes up on a regular basis, so let's take a look at that. Uh, you can only have items on your sideline that can be <clears throat> used by the start in force. So you cannot have an ID character on your sideline that is not able to be called in by any figures on your start in force. Uh, so you want to be aware of point values that you have on your sideline compared to the point values of who you hope to be calling in these sideline figures. All right, let's look at one more piece before we really get into the, the uh, actual use of the ID cards. So as of the date of this video, we're dealing with what's relatively a new inclusion of ID cards back into Silver Age. Uh, and as you go through some of those more newer inclusions, uh, there appear to be a few areas that might be updated or might be in need of clarification. I'm just gonna show this clarification from 2017 where WizKids mentions the change to call in help uh, from the printed text on older cards to match the way newer cards work, uh, which we are gonna cover next. We'll cover other identities and real names in a future video. And then again, like I mentioned before, any new clarifications that come out as, uh, as kind of the rules team kind of catches up with the inclusion of these items back into Silver Age, any of those new uh, updates I'll post in the comments also and if it changes like dramatically I'll post new videos on those okay but you'll want to be aware that uh, your call in help here in this clarification some of the older cards have a more complicated call in help mechanic than what we're going to cover in the next couple slides I'm going off of the clarification from 2017 since that's the most recent clarification that deals in deals with call in help uh, that makes it a power action across the board. So that's what you'll see in the next slides. Here's what an actual ID card looks like. Uh, we already covered setup. We're going to move on to how to use this card in a game, but you'll see all the pieces of an ID card. The cost is up top, the collector number's up there, the name is uh, printed right there in the 
in the big slot at the top. Then you have inspiration, set up, call in, help, and inspire. Some of the cards might have something slightly different, which we're going to cover, but you should see set up and call in, help on the back of your card. And remember, there might be erratas that make the text of your printed card actually overridden by WizKids uh, rule ins. Okay, so the basic. Uh, the basics here of how you use these, the call and help is you take a power action. So, so a figure on your on the map that's on your starting force can take a power action to activate. Uh, if no other call in helps have been activated this turn. So basically you're kind of limited to one call in help per turn, not per figure. Uh, activating the activating figure it has to be equal to or more points than the ID figure. So if you have a figure on your start in force it's on the map it's 100 points you could take a power action to call in a uh, id character that is 100 points or less a 100 point start in force figure could not call in a id figure of 125 points okay after you take that action then you place the id character adjacent to the activated figure and then you remove the id card from the game and your opponent scores the ID card points. Uh, those points are usually five or three points, depending on which ID card that you're using. Now, there are certain ways the ID character returns to the sideline. We're gonna do an example at the end of the video, but let's hit, hit it briefly here. So that ID character that now is on the map, it stays on the map until certain things happen. Uh, one of those things is at the beginning of your next turn. So you call it in during your turn, then your turn ends, your opponent takes a turn. At the beginning of your next turn, ID character would return to your sideline. ID character also returns to your sideline immediately if no square it occupies is within five squares of the activated figure. So you can't call in an ID character and then it just run across the map it has to be within five squares of the activated figure at all times, or it immediately goes back to your sideline. Uh, or the ID character is removed from the map by any other effect. There's different things that could remove that ID character from the map, uh, in addition to the two bullet points that we just talked about. Okay, I also wanna hit on this, uh, on this part of the video about the bounty effect. You'll find this on the wanted card IDs. So what this one has is slightly uh, a slightly different effect that can come into play. So this one, you call in the ID figure, it's on the map, it stays there, but when an opposing character hits the ID character, immediately return it to your sideline. So as soon as the hit happens, it gets returned to the sideline, and then the attacking character, so your opponent's character, can heal one click or that bounty character is on the map until the beginning of your next turn, at which time it goes back to the sideline and then you heal the character that used the call in help one click. Okay, on this, uh, on this part of the video, we're gonna look at the, what the ID characters can and cannot do. So even though they are on the map and they might seem like a normal figure that can do all the things a normal figure can do, there are some limitations to what ID characters can do. So they cannot be carried. They cannot be equipped. They cannot be given double power actions and they cannot replace or be replaced. Uh, so you can't call in a shift and focus figure and then swap it out. You also can't call in a figure and then pick them up and move them. You also cannot equip that ID figure, but you could pick up objects with that figure and do object attacks. Uh, and then one big thing here is your ID character can be KO'd. So that comes into play with your tournament strategy. If you call in a figure and it's still there on your opponent's turn, that's fair game. The opponent might switch it up and dedicate all their attacks to try to KO a called in high point ID character and score all those points of the figure. Remember, they've already scored the points of the ID card 
but usually that's just a small point of uh, three or five points. Now, uh, keep in mind that this can influence what your fig what figures you want to call in and when you want to call them in. So if your opponent's all tokened up, uh, maybe it's a little bit more safe to call in a high point ID character to do some damage and then leave them on the map. But if your opponent is uh, has a bunch of attacks penned in for their upcoming turn, that might influence what you pull onto the map that they might have access to. All right, so on this one, let's talk about the uh, inspiration and intimidations that you might find on certain cards. Uh, certain, most of the cards are going to have inspirations and inspire, inspire going on. Uh, some of the DC cards, they put out some that have intimidation. We'll talk about them both real quick. So another thing happens when you pull the uh, ID character onto the map. They have inspire. And there's two different types of Inspire out there right now. Uh, you'll want to look at the printed text on the back of your card uh, to make sure that you know what the Inspire, how it triggers and what it does. So we have two of them here. One of them is Inspire. When the ID character is placed on the map, adjacent friendly characters can use the ID character's Inspiration ability until your next turn. We'll talk about that in a second also. And then we also have Inspire. When a character friendly to an ID character is in an adjacent square, they can use that character's inspiration. So you'll see a little bit of difference about how things trigger and who can have access to the inspiration abilities. Okay, on certain cards, it's when the ID character is placed, it triggers uh, on all adjacent friendly characters at that time. On other ID characters, it's it kind of follows the ID character. So when a, when your figures become adjacent to that ID character, then they can have access to the inspiration. We're going to take a look at two examples of that in a second. For the intimidation, here's what it says. Intimidate. When the ID character is placed on the map, choose one to last until your next turn. Opposing characters within three squares can't use the listed intimidation powers or opposing characters within three squares modify attack minus one. We'll look at an example of that also. So for the ID card itself, uh, it will detail the specifics of what inspire or intimidate or bounty. But an example of inspiration uh, from Hulk's ID, that's the AUID 102. So that's from Age of Ultron, which is a little bit older variety. Uh, it has can use charge and modify attack value by plus one when making a close attack. So that's its inspiration. For that particular card, this triggers when a friendly character is adjacent to Hulk. Now, as a comparison, Rogue's ID card, which is MVID 14, which is on the newer side of the ID cards, it has Steel Energy as the inspiration, and it triggers when Rogue is placed on the map and affects all adjacent friendly characters at that time. Those characters then could use Steel Energy until your next turn, even if they're no longer adjacent to Rogue, or even if Rogue's no longer on the map. So it triggers and it gives that ability to adjacent figures until your next turn. Characters that were not adjacent to Rogue when she was placed on the map would not be able to use Steel Energy. Uh, intimidations found on certain cards. One example is Harley Quinn's ID card, which is uh, DCID008. It has exploit weakness as the intimidation, which means when she is placed on the map, she could choose to modify down attack by minus one on opposing characters within three squares, or she can make it that opposing figures within three squares cannot use exploit weakness. Whichever option you choose, it's tied to that Harley Quinn and lasts until your next turn. All right, now that was a lot of talking about the text and such on the ID cards. Now let's try to break it down here in an example. So now we'll look at an example of how this works actually in game. Our force in this example includes Awesome Andy and a Hulk ID. Our sideline has Empire Hulk, uh, which is number 71. 
that Hulk has two starting lines. It has a 225 and a 50 point starting line. When we revealed forces, we chose Hulk as the ID character and we turned him to his 50 point starting line. Since Awesome Andy's only 55 points, he could not have chosen the 225 line. Okay, in this example, our opponent has high evolutionary over there and a bunch of scrolls with them. So for this example, Andy would take a power action to use the ID card's call in help. This would bring the fault into an adjacent square. The ID card is scored and it's removed from the game. So your opponent has now scored five points. Hulk can then use uh, be used as a normal figure with the limitations we spoke about earlier. Uh, for this Hulk, he has charge with blades and exploit, and he also has it when he uses blades, he can also deal damage equal to half of the D6 result to each untargeted opposing character adjacent to Hulk. So for this particular one, he can then take an action to, to charge in and attack high evolutionary with blades and then deal out some penetrating damage to the scrolls. Uh, just as a side note, that would be getting past their shape change since Hulk is not actually attacking them but just dealing damage. The uh, Remember, the ID character would leave the map immediately if they are not within five squares of the call-in figure. So for this example, if Hulk were to have charged farther, as soon as he entered a square more than five away, he would have gone directly to the sideline. Uh, now looking at we, what we just did, in this example, the, the state of the game made it so that calling in Hulk was a better option for your force than Andy trying to attack on his own. So depending on what you have on your sideline, what's going on in the game, uh, kind of determines if it makes sense to give up those five points or if it doesn't make sense. Sometimes you might have a high point character that can also be used to call in uh, when you have those high point situations, your high point figure might be your main attacker, but they might be missing something that you need for this particular match, in which case it might make sense to, for them to call in a figure to fit whatever the situation is. We're gonna cover some more advanced concepts in additional videos uh, as it relates to ID figures. But what I want to demonstrate real quick is a common way that your ID characters um, can get off the map. They can come in, do what's needed, and then get out of there before your opponent's turn so that your opponent does not have the chance to KO that figure and score additional points. Uh, in this case, Andy has sidestep on his top clip. So after he takes the action to call in Hulk, and Hulk is charged and does his deal, Andy is now exactly five squares away. Remember, ID characters return to the sideline if they are not within five squares of the call-in figure. So now, on your turn, after you did your call-in, after Hulk attacked, you can now give Andy sidestep to sidestep him away. And then, since now Hulk is no longer within five squares of the call-in figure, he would return to your sideline. Uh, in that way, now all of that happened on your turn, your opponent's turn, they don't even have the chance to try to KO that Hulk. They only scored the points for the call for the ID card itself. They don't have the chance to try to KO that higher point figure and score some additional points. And that's a common tactic that uh, you can use. Have your call in figure, uh, some kind of access to sidestep, the person you call in has run and shot or charge. They can go to the very edge of where they need to be. Then you sidestep away and they poof off of the map. Other ways you can do that is with some TK. So you can call in figure can call in somebody. They can do whatever they have to do. And then either you can TK away the call in figure or you can call TK away the ID character.
and uh, that's another way to proof them once you get them out of the space requirement. All right, I hope this video helped you understand the basics of how to use ID cards, and it gives you some options for your Silver Age teams. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, and if you already have some Silver Age team builds, including ID cards that you can't wait to try out. Thanks for watching.